Hey everyone, welcome to your Sunday edition of Collider Mailbag. I'm Perry Nimroff. That's Mark Riley. We're at the big boy desk today. It's the big boy desk. It's true. <laughs> it's the. It's no longer the kids' table and Thanksgiving. This is the main event. For some I reason, like when I'm sitting next to you, I feel like we belong at the kids' table, though. We, well, yeah. Where's your fancy jacket? I took it off. That's why we're at the kids' table. I took it off. Uh, the fancy jacket was not my fancy jacket. It's just because apparently people here are warm-blooded and they need to put on the air. And so much that we, the mist is coming out of your, your mouth, whatever. That's this is a mailbag. a visual. All yeah. right, let's go into our first question for the day. This one comes from Monty, who writes, considering all categories, what movie will be nominated for the most Oscars this year? Riley, I'm not giving you my answer first. I want to hear your answer. Uh, then why are you giving it me? I, I am I not the Oscar <laughs> predictor that's here. That's why I didn't want to go first. Yeah, I know. I didn't want because, to influence your answer. Well, see, but, like, okay, if this were high school, I'd be cheating right now. I'd be looking over your shoulder and going, You can't see from that angle, can you? No. <laughs> over the brightness. I mean, you know, I, the most, what it will be the nominated the most Oscars this year. I can maybe kind of make an educated guess. The fact that Shape of Water got the most nominations at the Golden Globe, you can maybe transfer that over to the Oscars. Mm -hmm. However, it's the Golden Globes. You, the Golden Globes And there's are, next to no technical categories. Yeah, and the Golden Globes, exactly. No technical categories. Golden Globes are just an excuse to throw a big party and, and, and you know, have that stuff. Now, there's some legitimacy to the Golden Globes. Okay. But uh, as far as the most, I would, you know, the, the movie that's jumping to my mind is Dunkirk because mm -hmm. you have a, a lot of things at play here. Not only do you have direction, not only do you have maybe cinematography, um, you have special effects, you have, a, you know, music, you have like a lot of things like period piece, costuming, all these different things. So I think Dunkirk could be up there. Call Me your, By Your Name is, is, is jumping to mind because you can maybe get a best adapted screenplay, you can mm -hmm. get a best actor, a best picture. Um, Lady Bird is, these are all the movies people are really talking about. So I kind of go down the list and go, well, you can get a director, you can get a writing, you can get an acting, you can get a picture. So those are the ones that, that jump out to me, but you're going to change my mind with your, well, your, your list that is, was prepped probably five weeks ago. So you're, you were onto something when mm. you said shape of water. Ooh. So this is how you could very quickly and easily narrow it down is take a look at the list of movies that we're mm. talking about for okay. maybe best picture. If you want to narrow it down to 10 to eight and then consider which ones are likely to get nominated in the technical categories and in the big one. So shape you could say you'll call me by your name, but that's mostly going to be directing and acting in best picture. Yeah. You could say Dunkirk, but that's that's not going to get any acting nominations. I know. Shape I, of Water I has thinking, both. Yeah, Shape of Water, <laughs> you can get Sally Hawkins. You can get uh, Richard Jenkins. You These, could get Octavia Spencer. Octavia Spencer. You can Del get Best Toro. Director, Best Makeup. Best the, uh, Original Screenplay. Re best Original Screenplay, Best be Direction. Sound Design, Sound, sound design, Editing. Music, Best effects, Score. Best visual score, Effects. Visual That's, well. <laughs> they did a lot of practical we'll, stuff we'll, on Shape of Water, well, I hear. Well, We'll see. Okay. Given given what happened with the, uh, with the uh, best makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They didn't get what was that for um, the Golden Globes? That that was for. Uh, no, that was for. No, that was for that makeup. Was for the Oscars. That it was eliminated. It was eliminated on the short list. That's what it was. That's right. So the <laughs> Oscar short list came out, and Shape of Water was not on there. So my argument is gone now. Yeah. Because if you're not going to nominate, at least nominate Shape of Water for best it's makeup. So you are smoking something it's very so heavy. It's so funny. Oh, that's awful because like I was jotting down what I thought it would get nominated for and obviously right. I have that there. And what makes that even more of a shame is that Doug Jones is not going to get a Best Actor nomination. No, he's not. If, mm. if Andy Serkis can't get one for mocap performance, yeah. you know, uh, they, they don't look at this category right now for acting. Th that'll change. So someday it will change. Slowly but surely, Slowly but surely. I think. One the, the we didn't mention there. was uh, The Post. The, the Post could get uh, the, quite a few. Yeah, that could get, you know, writing, directing, acting, best picture, best director, 
you know, it's a period piece too. Yeah. It could get get maybe best costume me and Harris said, but I don't even know if that's on the list. If you're taking away <laughs> Shape of Water, then you have lost all credibility. Oh to me. man, okay. yeah, that story still bothers me. Yep. All right, question number two comes from Adam, who writes, "Hey, Collider Crew, love you guys and your channel. My question is, oh boy, what is your ranking of the superhero films that came out in 2017? Would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you and keep up the good work. All right. Oh boy." A before, before we get into this, I, okay. I know I know folks are very passionate about superhero movies, as you should be. We wouldn't have done that top 50 list if we weren't. I know some are upset with how the rankings fell out, but personal opinions disagree, of course. Be nice about it, though. You don't need to you don't need to say anything too nasty because yeah. we should all be happy and enjoy the movies we love. Mm. Um, I will say that the easiest ones for me to peg in mm -hmm. terms of my ranking were my top and my bottom. Yep. My top is absolutely Logan, above and beyond. It was my favorite superhero movie of this year, hands down, no contest. Okay. And at the bottom, it's Justice League, but it's not because I hated Justice League. It's no. just because I think we got a pretty damn good crop of superhero movies this year, and I had fun with Justice League. I wanted more from it. I, I did too. I, you know, you guys know my criticisms of Justice League. It it was Frankenstein's monster as far as assembly by committee and all these different things, and they didn't hit it. Mind you, there were some wonderful moments in that movie, but you're right, to, to, to use your phrasing, there wasn't a, a superhero movie that was awful this year no. that that was like oh my god stinky you know everything they, they, this is not a good movie this was a bomb it wasn't even like suicide squad for me where i i wanted to walk out of that movie because i thought it was so bad these were all good movies but i agree logan's my number one yeah but i can rank these things i can do it like that you want me to do it or yeah you i want, want to you to go first okay i'm gonna yeah, you want me to I'm go scared. first logan at number one okay thor ragnarok at number two spider-man homecoming at number three uh wonder woman at number four Guardians at number five and Justice League at number six. Um, that was just in my okay. enjoyment of it. Okay. So um, I I'm threw sure in, two extra ones in there. What other ones are there? I also included Power Rangers and Lego Batman movie. Yeah. So okay. the the other thing here is <laughs> when I when I was doing my uh, my my top, top 50, five so. and top ten of the year, I narrowed down the list, and then when I got to what was narrowed down to the top ten. I rewatched them all again before I finalized my order. In this case, I've seen some of these only once or twice, and you know it's a, it's a different feeling when you rewatch them all so closely to one another, and then sure. you could more confidently be able to rank them. So I will say the reason why I said my top and my bottom first mm. is because the middle of the list is a little fluid for me. It just depends on what I'm watching right now. Right, and I mean, like for example. The most recent one I've watched is Lego Batman. It's on like the, the premium channels all the time. And every time it's on, I stop, I leave it, and I think to myself, why didn't people love this movie more? It's a great it's movie. Real, it's really good. But I, I mean, I'll throw it in there. I'll okay. throw that in, in Power Rangers yeah. in there. Um, Power Rangers would make the last spot. I apologize. I, no, I, I understand that. Justice League would beat it for I, sure. It's a lot higher for me, but, but you know, and for I put, personal I, reasons. And I put Lego Batman maybe, you know, I watch, you, you bring up a good point. I watched uh, volume two the other day. Again, Guardians of the Galaxy volume two. The first time I saw it, I wasn't a big fan. I walked mm -hmm. out and I saw it was too much, too many jokes and they're trying to really rely on the joking. I still believe that. I still think that's there, but okay. I had a hell of a good time, yeah. a better time the second time around. So I'm going to put Lego Batman just, just under Guardians, okay. but above Justice League. All right. So that's, that would be where everything falls out for this guy wearing the Superman hat. I'm most nervous right now because of Power Rangers, and I don't want people to ruin a movie I love for me, but I have to do it. All right, so I would go after Logan, Spider-Man Homecoming, okay. Guardians Volume 2, Ooh. Power Rangers, then Thor Ragnarok, then Wonder Woman, then Lego Batman. Again, not because I oh think any of those are bad. I oh. just told you guys how much I love oh, Lego God. Batman. Oh, God. No. oh, just kidding. We're still rolling. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, Perry. It's I know, your opinion. I know. I'm never People gonna are stop gonna loving get that it. Movie. Remember the days where you could say, <laughs> "I like this movie," and somebody would go, "Really, I didn't like it that much." Oh, really? Why? And then you'd have this conversation. Now, 
You get cold names. Are you still, you get, are you still cold or are you sweating now after now this question? I'm, now, I'm, now I'm fine. <laughs> that was now the I got point. Blood, that was why I picked it. Now I got it. my blood boiling, actually. I'm feeling a little <laughs> good right now. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, let's move on to question three. Actually, before we move to question three, I want to tell you guys, we want to know what you think of... 2017's crop of superhero movies. So hit that comment section, share some thoughts there. Share your thoughts on each other's list in a kind, respectful manner. Please and thank you. Yeah. Question number three now comes from Ernesto who writes, you hear all the time about actors like Robert De Niro, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Heath Ledger who are method actors, but never any actresses. Why are there so few, if any, female method actors? Thanks and stay frosty, Collider Crew. So That's great. when I... When I read this question, it it really struck me because I hadn't really thought about that. And any time I think I've spoken about method acting in recent years, it's always been a, a male actor that's come to mind. Yeah. And I think part of the, I, it's not really a problem, I guess, but maybe it is. Part of the problem is that as we use the term method acting in headlines to grab attention, it isn't necessarily what method acting is. And I'm not an actor. I know you've done some acting, but based on my understanding of what, meth what method acting was when it first came to be and how it's evolved, it can mean so many different things, whether you're talking about transforming your body so you can exist as your character or just trying to have your mind in that person's shoes for a little while. I don't know. Do you take the definition in a different way? Well, I mean, you could go the definition from, like, acting, you know, where I learned that there was, you know, a lot of, like, Stanislavski where... You inhabit the character. You, there. I'm rusty on this, yeah. so I, you can't quote me. But now, because I know about these actors, and I study film, and I and I look at these things, and I hear these stories, like Adam Driver, Kylo Ren walking around as Kylo Ren, John Boyega would go up and and hug him because he's like he's he, he's like oh he looks sad. So I I know that there are that kind of things. I know there's Jared Leto. That so yes, we have mostly male. This is a stumper for me. I don't know women out there that do this. I, I, the first search on um, on Google for me brought up a does method acting disadvantage actresses. And I'm like, well, that sounds weird. That's it sounds weird. But I mean, even without reading the content there, I could probably make a guess at what that article is going for. But when I Googled it, the first thing I came up with is, and I'll tell you the title and everything so you could read it if you like. Um, it comes from One Room with a View, and it's an article by Olivia Luter, and she wrote it back in 2016, which I guess is when the Jared Leto stuff happened. And she name drops Hilary Swank for mm. Boys Don't Cry, uh, Reese Witherspoon for my favorite movie of 2014, which was Wild. She actually, you know, like she carried around all that stuff, and they didn't actually stop for, you know, a traditional lunch break. They they snacked as they made it, so that was oh, her wow. her version of it. And she get, she does break down what method acting is. And actually, one of the things that she highlights comes from Urban Dictionary, which says, uh, trying, to, trying to relive shit you probably ain't ever lived, on cue no less. <laughs> it, funny, but there's some accuracy to that. So I there did, you go. Oh, I, Anne Hathaway, who lost all that weight for Les Mis. Yeah, I guess that counts, too. I, I found one for the reader. Kate Winslet uh, reportedly dove into her role in the reader to point out that she had trouble getting back to normal life. She said of the experience, it's like I've escaped from a serious car accident and need to understand what has just happened. So you can take method for, like, the actual Stanislavski method, or you could take it as, like, really inhabiting the role and really mm -hmm. getting into it and, and remaining on the cusp of that character during breaks and everything. Or he could be like Jared Leto and send rats to people and, what was it, condoms? What did that guy do? I don't want to think about You're any crazy, of that. crazy, Jared. <laughs> but re really talking about this, it it makes me, uh, like, I am even more so in awe of acting. Just the idea of being able to completely transport yourself into another person's frame of mind to perform a role so wholly. It, really, anybody who does that. Kudos to you. All right, question number four comes from Zachary, who writes, very specific question, but do you have any top movie-related songs for 2017? Here are my top two. He says, uh, Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin for Thor Ragnarok, and This Is Me by Kiala Settle for Greatest Showman. Mm. Um, yeah, so 
these came to mind very easily for me because they inspired me to cut a video recently. And mm. the, the reason I made the video is because these songs were just stuck in my head and I can't stop listening to them. And the songs are, this is me also. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fantastic and her performance is incredible. There's also a video, a, a behind the scenes video that I know is going around the internet where I believe it's from earlier on in rehearsals. There's one of her and there's another of Hugh Jackman performing one of the songs from Greatest Showman that is absolutely incredible. Nice. I forget what kind of surgery he had, but he wasn't supposed to sing, so someone was standing in for him. And I'm not gonna spoil it, but if you can Google Hugh Jackman, Greatest Showman behind the scenes, I'm sure you could find the video I'm talking about. So there was that one. Mystery of Love from Call Me By Your Name, which mm -hmm. has been on repeat on my phone for way too long now. Um, I'm obs you know I'm obsessed with March of the Resistance, which oh. is in Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's my, my new ringtone. And um, Coco, Proud Corazon, which Aww. is actually not the one that's getting nominated for everything, but it, it's one that's featured towards the end of the movie. And, and it's beautiful. There's something about it yeah. that, that I, really gets me. I, I would put that out there. I would also do... Um, uh, immigrant song from yeah. from uh, Thor. I think that really, in, in a way that Guardians did by enhancing, you know, but using music to kind of score the movie, Thor didn't really do that. They used immigrant song, but it was like in a way that really, I like every time they played it, I was like, oh yeah, because it was during an action scene and it became like something that, ah, it was just perfect. I go to the, I'm sorry, The Last Jedi I've been listening to, <laughs> I got it for Christmas and I've been listening to that thing over and over and over again and I, I'm listening... <laughs> With with what happens to Leia in in space oh, at the very beginning, the, the, the music there is you have the March of the Resistance. See, you're in there. you're smart. I should just buy a full album and not just listen to one part of that score. You gotta maybe. listen to that there's, whole score. There's something about it. You've heard me say it before. I have the same problem now with both Force Awakens and Last Jedi. For some reason, when I hear that score, it doesn't matter what's happening on screen. Even though in both instances, what is happening is very powerful, I freaking cry. And they're weird, they're, they're semi-strange, unusual yeah. times to cry, but I try. Hey, I get it, but uh, I, I'm with you. I'm more okay. of a scorer's guy. I don't really pick up on, like, if there's a, like a song that really stands out to me. Like, I remember Almost Famous, and I had oh. to go and buy the album because there were so many songs that I didn't have that I needed, um, like The Wind by Cat Stevens, and I was like, whoa, I listen to this over and over again. But if I'm going, like, Baby Driver, take your pick. I love Bell Bottoms. Bell Bottoms, great. There's so many wonderful, wonderful song uh, uses of song in that. But one that really st that I remember is because I'm a huge Dave Matthews fan is "Crashing to hmm. Me" and "Lady Bird." It was, whew, and it came yeah. out. So I just like I'll put that out there because I think everybody should experience that moment. Make so. me think of the soundtracks I had when I was younger. Mm -hmm. One I was obsessed with was Empire Records, and that's oh, yeah. the one that introduced me to the Gin Blossoms. And oh, when I got older and I was able to buy and go to concerts by myself, I I made a point to whether I had someone to go with or not, go to the annual New York City Gin Blossoms concert. Oh my god, they're so good live! I still love all that music. You know, I used to live by uh, the lead singer. Are you serious? Yeah, it was before they got big. I still, in Park my LaBrea. wallet, carry around a guitar pick I caught at one of those concerts, too. You, Park La Brea. You know Park La Brea. I do. Yeah. I, he moved out, like, right as I moved in, but they were like, oh, yeah, lead singer of the Jim Blossoms over there. I would have just, like, crept around that place you know, like a weirdo. Right? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, question number five comes from Cody, who writes, actually, it's really funny. We had an Adam and a Cody in this episode. Good for Adam and Cody. Hey, all right, guys. Um, this Cody writes, Hello, Collider crew. Thank you all for the great content. My question is, looking back at the movies your parents had to take you to the theater to see, what are some movies that you feel bad that they actually had to watch? I have two. My mom having to watch the live-action Cat in the Hat and my dad having to watch the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. What are some for you guys? Thanks. Oh. That's great. So my first one that very vividly comes to my mind right now is when Scream 2 came out. Mm. I happened to have been visiting my grandparents in Florida, and I think I made them take me to the theater to see it like three times. My older grandparents, I felt so bad slash didn't care because I love Scream and I really like Scream 2. Well, it's a damn good movie. Um, this is this is the all and end all be all of all movies because I remember specifically my mom telling me it's like what the hell was that like afterwards 
and that's Mac and Me. Yes. Oh. Mac Boy. and Me, 1988. It was released in August 12th of 1988. It was the biggest ripoff trying to rip off E.T. But you're talking about, what, like f six years later that they're trying to rip off E.T. And they made Mac and Me. And it's the worst movie that's been ever made. And I I was a kid. I was like, yeah, there's an alien and a kid. We got to go see this. And I, I'll, Which it's makes a sense. vivid. It's a vivid memory walking out of... And I, I forget the theater name, but it was in Orange. I grew up in Orange County, and it was Orange. It was like the city block. And we walked out, and people were walking out, shaking their heads. And my mom was like, I'm not taking you to a movie for a while. Aww. It was like, nope, you can't. I'm not doing that again. I'm like, oh, I thought it was fine. Not good. I not have good. a good recent one. So while I was home for the holidays, we saw many movies. And, and sadly, we ended on a, a low note because the last movie I took my parents to see was was downsizing oh boy <laughs> yeah did well, you watch no downsizing? i haven't seen it yet i oh actually my God. i hear i hear it's... so many bad things and it breaks my heart because it's the director and writer of sideways know, which, which is my one of my top five favorite I, movies all time i like a lot of his films i really this is this is mind-bogglingly bad because the wow. first act is so good and I see three different movies in this one movie, and I yeah. really strongly dislike two of them, and really liked the first part, and was really sad it didn't go in that direction. And my parents, at the end of that, were like, they, they turned to me and they're like, what <laughs> the, uh, they're yeah. not happy at all. It's also, I think, a two hour and 15 minute movie, so oh, they really weren't happy. That's a long time. But I think time. they were even more unhappy when I brought home the DVD for Night of Cups. <laughs> Ever seen that? I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I, I can't make any sense of that movie still yeah. to this day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that was Sunday Mailbag. That was fun. Riley, did you have fun? I had fun, as okay, always. Good. Come on, it's Sunday Mailbag. <laughs> what we do here on Sunday Mailbag? We answer your questions and we do it well. And right? if you, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> if you want one of your questions answered on this show, maybe on an episode of Movie Talk, you know what to do. Send it on over to collidervideo at gmail.com. I know some folks are out there are saying, oh, you know, I send questions in all the time and they never get picked we really do go through them all and sometimes what happens when your question doesn't get picked is we've picked one where someone else has asked something similar or maybe even the same exact thing which is why we always encourage you to keep it creative fun different whatever comes to your mind give it a shot we really do go through them all so we want you to know that please keep sending them in they're fun to read thank you guys so much please make sure to like share subscribe and we will see you soon with more mailbag movie talk jedi council all that good stuff enjoy the rest of your weekend